You all, dear viewers, have lots of time to spend these days. Aren't what better activity is there than lock yourself up in a dark room, turn on the computer and start playing old games? Or getting pissed, you take a pick. Well, I picked both of these and this is the outcome. It was about 25 years ago when I first saw Little Big Adventure on my mate's computer. And even though he had only some kind of black and white monitor, it looked absolutely amazing for the year. SVG resolution, CD music, an amazing gameplay. Later, he lent me his CD, I brought it home to play on my color monitor, and it looked even better. At least that's what I remember. So, to see if I remember that right, I fired up my old 4A6, put the CD in, and ran the installation. I gotta say, it still looks great even after so many years. As the game's title says, it's an adventure game. I'd call it an action-adventure game. And as such, most important part should be the story. This story is about a lad named Twinson from Planet Twinson, who's being held a prisoner for having improper dreams. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Another sort of dystopian story. And you're right. But this time, its anthropomorphic nature is more fairy tale like even though it's brutal and rough in reality. Well, not that brutal, but many of those animals will die during the game. The planet is populated by four different species. You'll meet elephants, rabbits, some kind of vegetable perhaps, and some sort of humans. Not sure if I can call this a human, but it's close enough. And as in the real world, some are scumbags that help main antagonist insidious Dr. Funfrog to catch you. I don't know why the villains are always doctors. Others you find along the way help you, and most of them are just trying to get by. Dr. Funfrog found out about Twinson's dreams, which are somehow connected to the prophecy, according to which someone called the Air is supposed to get rid of the evil in the world. And since Dr. Funfrog is this evil, he does everything in his power to get rid of anything and anyone who has something to do with the prophecy. He uses his factories to create clones that make your life and lives of all inhabitants as hard as possible. What he doesn't know though, is that you'll kick his ass anyway. To do that, you first need to find a way to break out of prison, kill some of the guards on the way out, and figure out how to get home to your gorgeous missus and to pick up your stuff. Well, don't get your hopes up, she's nothing to wank to, she looks rather… simple. After you two got together, it didn't take Funfrock's clones very long to arrive and take a woman away. You are charged with taking an escapee, follow us. Now you've got three problems. Find out what your dreams mean, evade or kill every sword you encounter, and of course you need to rescue your girl. To help you do that, you've got some sort of magic ball. No, not that ball. This one you can throw at your enemies, it can even bounce off some surfaces which can be useful in some situations. As the game progresses, you'll find a couple of artifacts that will upgrade the power of your magic ball. And if it's not enough, later in the game you'll get a sword. It's more powerful, but sometimes it misses a target and leaves you open to an attack. There are four behavior modes in the game you can use to get around. First, there's normal mode. It's used in conversations, using items and rummaging through rubbish. Which brings me to the dialogues. You can talk to everybody and you should. You may get valuable information where to go or where to get some stuff that can help you on your journey. Dialogues may seem childish and writing sort of lazy at times, but they are not particularly bad, I really enjoy them. Second one is an athletic mode. It's for jumping, running about and hit him things with your nose. It gets quite annoying after a while when you hit the wall, stairs or whatever because you can't see where you're going. Jumping can be frustrating as well in some cases. For instance, when you need to jump onto a small platform or a small rock or something and you keep missing the spot and dying in result. On the other hand, it's much better to use athletic mode to throw the magic ball. It is sometimes a bit difficult to hit the target in this isometric environment so you must fine-tune your angle. However, in normal mode, Twinson turns too much in one press of a key. It's much more precise in an athletic mode. Then we have an aggressive mode, where Twinson turns into an incoherent drunk. He uses his kicks and fists to kick ass, but it's not much of a use most of the time. Most of the enemies are too strong to be harmed by this, so the magic ball is the only way to kill them. Later in the game, when you find a sword, it becomes useful again. Last mode is a discrete mode. You need it like two or three times during the game to sneak behind a guard unnoticed, otherwise it's useless. As in most action games, you've got a health bar and a magic bar. Every time you use the ball, you deplete your magic bar and every time you get hit, you of course deplete your health bar. There are three ways to get back your lost health and magic. First, you can buy it in a shop. There are just two in the entire game, however. 
Second, some objects like barrels and garbage cans can drop health, magic or money while pressing space right in front of them. So, it's always a good idea to go through garbage. You never know what you may find. On third, dead enemies. After they die, they drop health, magic or money. Let's crack on with the story. After those wankers took your missus, you start asking around and find out they took it to some fun frog's fortress and you must find out where it is and how to get inside. The planet is not too big, but it consists of many different islands which you will travel to. Desert, high mountains, large cities and even snowball track. You'll need to travel from island to island first by public transport, which needs lots of money. These animals are thieves, but it's better than kicking the bollocks. Later in the game, you'll travel by motorcycle, car, catamaran and a talking dragon. For a bike, a car and a hovercraft, you'll need a petrol. Bloody Dragon, however, is free. They released two versions for DOS, CD version and floppy version. CD version includes CD music, speech and full motion video. Version for PlayStation was released a couple of years later. And as it's almost mandatory these days, they released Enhanced Edition five years ago, which is practically the same game, but ported for Android and iOS. Music is brilliant. Part of the game uses CD tracks and part uses MIDI. Floppy version, of course, uses only MIDI. MIDI soundtrack is as always in the description. And as it usually was in all games, music fits perfectly in the settings and it's fairy tale graphics. Speaking about graphics, as you can see, Little Big Adventure uses isometric graphics, which was quite popular in the 90s. Even though I like it a lot, it may be a pain sometimes. Most of the time it's quite clear, you can see where you're going and what's going on behind the corner, but a spatial orientation can be a problem sometimes. So pressing the enter may help in certain situations, it centers the screen around you. LBA is a nice little adventure game, big on the story, graphics and music, but a bit easy on the adventure side. There are practically no puzzles in the game, it's virtually impossible to get stuck. One person tells you to talk to another person, who tells you to go somewhere to do something and so on. The plot is all in here, it must have been drawn with the ruler. There are no twists, no surprises, nothing that can spice up the plot a bit. But I like the story anyway, it was excellent as well as the whole game. Well, and that's about it. Stay safe and catch you lot in the comments. Hey, <laughs>